The Mandalorian Season 4 7 Theories, Tense, What's EXT for The Mandalorian Season 4? What comes next for The Mandalorian Season 4 now that Moff Gideon of the Imperial Remnant has been vanquished and Din Djarin has a new position with Grogu? The Mandalorian Season 3 is already over, but it left plenty of hints for Season 4 in its aftermath. The Mandalorian Season 3 served as a powerful trilogy finale after Moff Gideon's, Giancarlo Esposito, death and the recapture of the Mandalorian homeworld, offering a compelling concluding tale that first started when Din Djarin, Pedro Pascal, encountered the young boy known as Grogu. However, speculation about the pair's upcoming location in Season 4 of The Mandalorian has already begun. The Imperial Remnant hiding on their homeworld was successfully resisted by the Mandalorians in The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 8. It was also made known that Moff Gideon had plans that were distinct from those of the other members of the Imperial Shadow Council. In the aftermath, Din Djarin formally adopted Grogu as his son while Mandalore was recaptured by Bo-Katan Kryze, Katie Sackhoff. There are numerous storylines that might be developed in the future because of Jaren's new position working with the New Republic moving ahead and the requirement for a new opponent. Here are some early predictions for Season 4 of The Mandalorian. Din Djarin clashes with new Imperial warlords. Din Djarin struck a pact with Captain Carson Teba of the New Republic, as was seen in the concluding moments of The Mandalorian Season 3 finale, Paul Sun Young Lee. Jaren volunteered to assist the overburdened New Republic locate additional Imperial warlords in the Outer Rim as an independent and off-the-books contractor. As an illustration, in The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 7, along with Captain Pelian, Grand Admiral Farron's right-hand man, man, and Commandant Brendel Hux, several other nameless Imperial moths served on the Imperial Shadow Council. It would be wonderful to see an Imperial Moth transition from Legends to the official Star Wars canon and emerge as a new antagonist for Jaren to battle since that Gideon is no longer around, just like Thrawn himself. While it would be awesome to see a canonical Zinj or Isman Isard, a whole new Imperial character made for the Mandalorian season may forth also be quite interesting. In either case, it appears most likely that Din Jaren and the newly renamed Din Grogu will hunt down a new Imperial commander together. Moff Gideon is still alive, thanks to clones. One of the most popular ideas on the internet is that Gideon somehow survived and will appear in Season 4 of The Mandalorian. Although Gideon's hidden clones, which he attempted to make artificially Force-sensitive, were destroyed by Jaren and Grogu, it has been hypothesized that the Gideon wearing the Dark Trooper armor was also a clone. It is said that only his clones died, the real Gideon was never on Mandalore in the first place. The fact that Gideon didn't have a mustache in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, as he had in Seasons 1 and 2, provides a significant amount of support for this theory. It still seems like a significant stretch. After all, the Moff's assertions that his clones weren't yet complete and hadn't taken their first breaths sounded extremely definite, as did the destruction destruction of the clones before the encounter with Gideon in his new armor. Elia Kane creates Mandalorian and New Republic tensions. Elia Kane, Katie O'Brien, is most likely still employed by the New Republic administration at the end of The Mandalorian Season 3, despite her actual allegiance to the Imperial Remnant. It seems sense that even though she was a spy for Moff Gideon, she could still discover ways to obstruct the New Republic's activities in the Outer Rim. In The Mandalorian Season 4, it would be quite intriguing to see Kane return and possibly learn about Din Djarin's unauthorized work for the New Republic. The New Republic and the Mandalorians as a whole might easily become divided, and Kane is still in a position to pose a persistent threat. Grand Admiral Thrawn goes to war with Mandalore. Grand Admiral Thrawn, Lars Mikkelsen, though not actually seen in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, was alluded to by Captain Pelian at the Imperial Shadow Council meeting. Pelian announced the military force of the Shattered Empire as well as Thrawn's impending return. While the upcoming Ahsoka series will feature Thrawn's live-action debut for Star Wars fans, the heir to the Empire will be much greater than any single show. Thrawn's homecoming could lead to a conflict with Bo-Katan and the Mandalorians, who must now protect their recaptured home, and he is poised to emerge as the main antagonist.
After all, Pelian had already stated that the Imperial Remnant would have trouble reclaiming Mandalore. The Mandalorian discovers Project Necromancer and the First Order. The Mandalorian bounty hunter and Grogu may be the first to learn of the full scope and objectives of the Imperial Remnant and their attempts to forge the ultimate First Order depicted in the Second Trilogy as part of Din Djarin's new work with the New Republic. Brendel Hux and Praetorian guards have already hinted at the First Order, but the Mandalorian Season 4 might go even further. Consider how compelling it would be to learn more about Project Necromancer and its possible connections to Palpatine's resurrected body. The Knights of Ren will debut in The Mandalorian Season 4. An appearance from the Knights of Ren may be quite intriguing if the Mandalorian future seasons continue to hint at the sequels. The canonical comics have shown that the Knights existed at this time, and it is known that they joined Palpatine's army right before Return of the Jedi. Because of this, it would be awesome to see the Knights of Ren get some much-needed on-screen atonement with a potential part in The Mandalorian Season 4. Mandalore's new age is established with mythosaurs. One would expect that their fellow Mandalorians will continue to play a part moving forward, even though Din Djarin and Din Grogu were planned to have adventures outside of Mandalore. Under Bo-Katan's direction, Mandalore has entered a new era. Even after the Darksaber was destroyed in the Season 3 finale of The Mandalorian, Mandalore still seeks Kry's advice now that they are all working together and are stronger than ever. In light of this, it would undoubtedly be satisfying to witness Mandalore's further development as well as the reappearance of the powerful mythosaurs that were hinted to in The Mandalorian Season 3. Let's hope they surface in The Mandalorian Season 4, fulfilling the fables that the monsters will usher in a new era for Mandalore and its inhabitants.